How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to episode number niner niner. N- was that a niner? Was that a there? niner? Are you on a walkie talkie? <laughs> it was a cordless. Welcome to episode 99 of How About That Cigar Live, guys. Live, as always, from the Drew Estate Cigar Studios. Thank you so much for joining us this evening. We have some awesome special guests on the show. So sit back, relax, tell us what you're smoking and drinking along with us in the comments. And let's, as always, open things up with our friends from Drew Estate Cigars. And let's talk about the brand new box designs for the popular Undercrown lines. This new 25 count design is more compact and shelf-friendly, enabling premium cigar retailers more shelf space inside their humidors. These new boxes inside. will roll out for all Undercrown lines, including Undercrown Shade, Undercrown Sungrown, and the original Undercrown Maduro. Mm. Finally, and most importantly, all these classic Undercrown blends will remain unchanged. A decade ago, the staff at Drew Estate Factory realized they had to reduce their consumption of Liga Pravada Number no. 9 cigars in order to keep up with consumer demand. These hardworking men and women in Esteli created their own signature cigar to enjoy. Constructed with many of the same rare tobaccos found in Liga Pravada, the Grassroots Undercrown Cigar brand debuted, followed by Undercrown Shade and then the Undercrown Sungrown. These new boxes for the Undercrown Shade and Maduro are shipping now with Undercrown Sungrown soon to follow. For more info, Please visit DrewEstate.com. So, episode 99. That's <clears throat> It's kind of insane to think about 99, but it's uh, it's been a fun ride. You guys, uh, our viewers and listeners, man, you guys have just been absolutely phenomenal. We appreciate you guys so much, so much. for you know sticking with us and making us part of your uh, weekly cigar show rotation. Uh, and so, um, it, it was 42 degrees here in minnesota today so i actually thought about putting heat on shorts wave. heat wave i thought about wearing shorts and sandals but i i decided not to i i was actually scraping ice off my my driveway but uh 42 is better than minus 22 which it was just last week it was indeed uh shout out to chad tim suit camp josh john ab cigars we love you guys we thank you for the support the continued support yes. Uh, it truly means a lot. Absolutely. We love you guys for watching and listening um, and spending time with us on Monday nights. Um, so briefly, a little bit of sports, um, you know, with the NFL season over for the last couple of weeks, we talk about our Minnesota wild before the baseball season opens up. The The Minnesota wild started out so promising and now not so promising um uh, but our division our division sucks um meaning our division is extremely tough you, we've got the avalanche the golden knights the blues it's a very tough division to play in uh and they just haven't really been playing very good hockey so hopefully things will turn around but it's uh what do they call it a rebuilding year <laughs> i love that term it's a rebuilding year yes it's been a every, rebuilding every, year for every, 12 years all the years <clears throat> absolutely so uh as always for our viewers uh leave uh comments let us know what you're smoking and drinking along with us this evening we would love to for you guys to get involved in the conversation when we bring on our special guests of the evening and as always guys you know it you love it special guests on how about that cigar live are brought to you by corona cigar company and coronacigar.com the internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store mm -hmm. corona cigar company offers you the finest handmade cigars humidors and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price you'll also find unique and limited cigars containing florida sun-grown tobacco as a proud american President and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Mr. Jeff Borshowitz, believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. At Corona Cigar Company and coronacigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. So, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, please welcome to episode number 99 of How About That Cigar Live, Bradley and Alec Rubin. Welcome to the show. Guys, thanks for having us on. We appreciate it. Woo! Bradley, Bradley I we can't hear you. You're muted. <laughs> 
You were I I had you Classic. muted, but I un- you know what? Just get rid of him. I'll do this on my own. <laughs> Classic. Can't Brad- hurry, Bradley. Bradley, just take two seconds, disconnect from the studio, and reconnect. You'll be all good to go. No problem. So Alec. So now that we're alone, guys. Now that we're yeah, alone. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> now that uh, Tom Selleck has left the room. <laughs> yes. Um, so one comment I want to make and is I love the fact that, you know, um, (laughs) you guys, so your dad created this monster, Alec Bradley cigars, and then you guys get into the cigar business and you're like, you know what, we're going to do this and we're going to call it something really unique. (laughs) You know what? Ouch. Wow. Shots fired. We're going to. I know my dad, you know, okay, he loved us. He named the company after us, but we also think we're awesome. And we also love ourselves. We also (laughs) love ourselves. Can you tell us? Am I good? He's back. We can hear him. You're good, but we're having a conversation over here, Bradley. (laughs) Okay, I'll I'll step out. See you guys. (laughs) I'm just busting your balls. um, But can you take us through the, the, the naming and, you know, how many times did you guys punch each other during that argument? What happened? <laughs> so, so we actually um, we went through a bunch of different ideas for names. And then at the end of the day, we were like, why don't we just call it Bradley and Alec? You know, it's different from Alec, Bradley. It's opposite. Bradley's name gets to be first this time. Why don't we just name it Bradley and Alec? So we went to Ralph, our VP here, and said we want to name it Bradley and Alec. And he said, no, you'll name it Alec and Bradley. <laughs> and... <laughs> Nice. And we just said, okay. And that <laughs> basically that's how we came up with the name Alec and Bradley. <laughs> Am I wrong, Brad? Is, did it, was, there, was there anything different? No, no, not really. And we wanted people to, to understand, um, basically make it as easy as possible to understand what the difference is, even though it is confusing. Um, I don't think too many people actually know the story of the company being named after us and right. meeting our father, Alan Rubin, and then them being like, wait, your name is an Alec Bradley and then having to explain the story. So I think it actually does make it a little bit easier for when people do see Alec and Bradley and ask their local tobacconist or use the internet and look it up on Google and find out the story and, you know, and palm their hands. And I, I think it actually helps get our brand story out there. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, it, it is honestly, it's, it's smart branding to there, there's nothing wrong mm-hmm. with with uh, making the most out of branding that is already recognized. Yep. Yep. There's nothing wrong with that at all. Hundred percent. So um, so I want to I want to go back to. Well, first, <clears throat> before we get into that, um, tell us. Uh, so I'm Garrett and I are smoking the Kintsugi and we're nice. just just into it and I'm loving it so far and Ooh. I'm drinking a little bit of uh Henry McKenna ten year bourbon, and Garrett is drinking a lovely. Uh, well, I got a couple things. I I go between this hop by Lagunitas, which is zero alcohol. It's basically a hoppy soda, and then this new craft non alcoholic beer, Groovy Stout. Uh, if you guys are, you know, non alcoholic drinkers, teetotalers for whatever reason gotta check this out it is so good it is uh it reminds me of what i remember guinness like you know i quit drinking at 17 so i didn't get out there a whole lot um but this is delicious (laughs) so bradley what uh what are you enjoying while you're uh, live with us here on the show i am having an old forester 100 proof just the easy drinker everyday drinker can't get rid of it yeah, I just bought a new bottle of that uh, a couple days ago. It's nice. never, never go wrong with it. Okay, real quick, we gotta put Chad's <laughs> nope up to re- down. This one here. Nope down. <laughs> this one. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that would be funny at all. <laughs> I'm trying to file a trademark lawsuit against his own sons. That would be, be hilarious. <laughs> that would be, be good. I would the, just love that'd be the ultimate dad prank. I, I can help with that. I work at a trademark law firm, so I can I can help with that. Perfect. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, that's good. I love that's that. That's very good. 
So, uh, Alec, tell us what you're uh, enjoying live with us here on the show. Yeah, so I'm drinking a beer from a Droid Theory. Here, here's the can right here. And what's cool about it is they actually do these pairings on the side, food, cheese, and cigars. And I had never tried this before, but the cigar is the Alec and Bradley Kintsugi. So I thought I'd try that tonight with the uh, Kintsugi and see how it paired. How's it going so far with the pairing? Excellent. Nice. And yeah, I'm really enjoying it. Are you on a Kintsugi right now? Yeah. Awesome. I'm smoking uh, the Corona Gorda. Looks like you're almost done with that thing. Yeah, I'm almost done with it. I'll let <laughs> another one right after this. <laughs> so I want to go back to, um, you know, because obviously when you guys were very young, you know, you you saw cigars, you smelled cigars, you know, they you were around them a lot, you know, with uh, with your father and, and, and probably his friends and other family <clears throat> most likely. But so I want to know when was the first time that you asked your dad for a cigar versus the first time you actually had one. So Bradley, let's go with you first. So first time was 17. I was, I was getting the itch. Uh, I wanted to experience it and I got the absolutely not. You're not going to have one before you're 18. Uh, and my first one was on my birthday when I was 18. Uh, our father really wasn't too strict on most things, but one thing that was not going to happen was, his two sons having a cigar before the age of 18. Yeah. And what was your yeah. first one? My first one was a Tempest natural. I wanted, Tempest. even though, but I had no idea how to smoke it. I did not successfully smoke it. So I think my first successful smoke was an Alec Bradley Connecticut, which Alec actually taught me the correct way to smoke. Okay. So Alec, when was the first time you asked dad for a cigar versus when you first tried one? You know, I never actually really asked him. The first, like, I never told him, like, hey, I want to smoke a cigar. I knew where he stood on the, the topic, but at 14 or 15, I mean, I was already wanting to try cigars, but <laughs> just, he did, he didn't have a bunch of rules growing up, so it was just wait till you're 18, and on my 18th birthday, I had my first cigar, which was a uh, a Max Nano, and it put me on my ass. Oh, that's, that's, uh, that's an interesting choice for right out of the gate. I thought it was small, and you know, if it's small, I can't it can't kick my ass too much. I didn't understand much about tobacco at the time or how ring gauges may affect you know affect things, and it put me on my ass. So, can we talk about this for a second? Um, obviously, since that time, the uh, Tobacco Twenty One uh, became an, in effect, and for those of us who are parents, and please, uh, viewers, chime in on this as well. I want to know if you have a son or daughter that comes to age of 18 and they want to have a cigar, what is your opinion on that today? That's a good question. That is a good question. So Alec, what do you, what do you think about that? When the time comes that you're, you know, if, 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 you know, when, when you have kids someday and they, be, they start reaching, you know, the 17 year old age bracket, uh, at, let's say T21 is still in effect. Are you are you going to abide by T21? Yeah, I think I will just because, you know, our father made us wait till 18 because I was illegal at smoking age when, you know, we were 18. So I think I would probably do the same thing, make them wait till they were 21 just because that's a legal smoking age. And I would never want them to have to lie about when they had their first cigar to anyone. So I would I would probably wait. Yeah. Bradley, what about you? probably the same but if i was like a really cool dad i would have to see how things play out then yeah. we'll see how things develop and we'll see how cool the kid is as, as well that that depends yeah you know that weighs very heavily in my decision when we know i mean we've got a lot of these <clears throat> guys like uh you know we had henderson ventura on there and he had been smoking since he was what 14 15 yeah. years old and a lot of these guys in nicaragua and dominican you know they start out very young and yeah. Um, but that law piece is important. Oh, know? I agree. I agree. Um, yeah, and I think it's different for, for the people who were born and raised in these cigar producing countries, whether it's Nicaragua, Dominican Republic, Honduras, Cuba, even, um, you know, cause they, it, things are just different there. Yeah. Uh, it's, and, yeah. and, and I think, yeah, you hear stories about, you know, people in those countries that, uh, they, they start rolling cigars at 11, 12 years old yep. and, yeah. Uh, I mean, potentially, I don't if, think that's potentially if I'm in a different I, well, country okay. with I my kid, 
I'm sorry. We can yeah. keep going at the same time. If I'm in a different country with my kid and it's a different smoking law, I mean, at that point, yeah. yeah. Have at it. Yeah. Mm. But I don't think it, it's, it's not as, it's not like it was 30, 40, 50 years ago, where I think it was more common back then where you would have 11 and 12 year olds actually rolling cigars in a factory. Uh, that that's yeah. almost unheard of these days. Uh, yeah, especially I've, especially I've never seen that in new world countries like Nicaragua and Dominican Republic. And I have a really hard time with this issue. Uh, and we touched on it a little bit last week. Uh, with yeah. Bear, yeah. Um, because when is an adult an adult, right? Is an adult at 18 or is it 21? You know? And so I, I really have a pull on both sides for me. Uh, and it's, and it's a dichotomy that, um, I don't know how it's going to play out. I, I really don't at this point. Um, I, I think T21 is, it, it would it would take a miracle for T21 to go away at this point. Oh, I do too. At, But at this really? point, what can you actually do at 18? Vote. I mean, you the military? You vote and you yeah. can go, go for your country? the military? Yeah. No, I, I, I know that. But I mean, they took away drinking at 18. They took away smoking at 18 or tobacco at 18. It's just becoming less and less. So mm -hmm. it's crazy. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be surprised if uh maybe not really in the near future but but sometime within our lifetimes i wouldn't be surprised if we start seeing the voting age go up and possibly mm -hmm. even the military age go up i wouldn't be surprised really? i'm not, I'm not okay. necessarily uh, in agreement with that but I, I i think it might happen and i don't see the military happening because the military subsidizes so much education that it is a way for a lot of people to get education that's true they go that route yeah but, you know but I, I, at the end of the day i don't think it's fair i mean i know things aren't fair mm -hmm. but if you can yeah. go to the military and go to war you should be able to have beer and you know have a cigar have a I backup agree. i mean 100%. It's, I it's a big life decision but if you're able to make that decision you're able to make this one as well yeah yeah so so alec for you you know early on as you you know you growing up around cigars all the time and then you know you get into each of us kind of start seeing things that we're interested in and things that we maybe want to do um for a career was it always in your mind that that you were going to join the family business or or did you have other um uh business ventures or or, or aspirations. aspirations for for maybe what you wanted to do for a living so for me, from a young age, I was really always into business. I, I really enjoyed asking my, my dad business questions. And at the same time, I would go in the backyard with him a lot at night while he was smoking blends and just sit with him and ask him tobacco questions. But he was always on the stance of go do whatever makes you happy. Go try whatever you want to try. So I always had that in my brain. But I also always really liked the idea of the cigar business. I hadn't had a cigar till I was 18. So you know, until I was 18 and started enjoying them, I was kind of like, yeah, maybe I'll go do something else. And then when the time came, there was nothing else I really wanted to do. This is what I wanted to do. I worked here in the summers from a young age in the warehouse and um, throughout college, uh, worked here as well. And I think the day I just, I graduated, I just went from part-time to full-time and never looked back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And what about you, Bradley? Um, you know, my my whole love made me. Uh, my my love my whole life was, was sports. Um, you know, rocking my heat shirt, rocking <laughs> my dolphins, my dolphins cup, and you know, big Florida Panthers fan my whole life. And um, I wasn't exactly sure what I wanted to do, but I took that time in college to explore and you know thought about sports and thought about this and that. But during college was my time to smoke cigars. You know, I finally turned eighteen. And I was having cigars, you know, shipped to me from <laughs> from my, my dad and I was smoking everything and sharing with my buddies and we were all just enjoying them. And I, I it was at that point that I realized how much it meant to me and, you know, see how much Alec Bradley has given to me my entire life. And I was like, you know, what am I doing if I'm not trying to give that to my, you know, future children, if I could pass down this company to them, like my father, you know, has allowed me to come into the business. I mean, yeah. what am I doing with my life? So um it was kind of towards my senior year that i finally was like this is this is what i want to do like how could i not want to do this 
uh, work with my brother, my dad, and at one point my grandfather, uh, I mean, I would have to, to be an idiot not to have that experience. It was, it was a pretty e easy decision at the end of the day. Yeah. Just so you know, we didn't know that was his decision until about two months before he graduated. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wow. He yeah. didn't tell keep us. It, keep it on the down low. Yeah. We That's were all really wondering, it. like, what is Bradley going to do? And then I think eventually I just asked him, what are your plans? And then he, he told us. Well, it's Brad all about the anticipation. Yeah. So, Bradley, yeah. what was what was your field of study in college? <clears throat> it was business management, entrepreneurship. Okay. So, um, you know, I, I always kept it in the back of my head that, you know, if I if I do decide to join the family business, it would be beneficial to have those um, those classes and, and the degree. Yeah. So, yeah, um, it, it did sit there in the back of my mind for most of my <clears throat> most of my college career. Yeah. Well, and it's funny because uh, about a year ago, uh, a little more than a year ago, we had your dad on the show and we asked him a little bit about you guys and your um, starting up your own blends and your own brands and everything. And he was he was really um, open about the fact that he, although growing up in a cigar family and, and all that and being around it all the time he didn't hand you guys anything that you guys were on, on the hook for your own project, your own, you know, your own work, putting in your own hours and all that. So what, what did that process look like for you guys when you first started, when you first said, okay, we're going to do this, this thing on our own. And what did the process look like when you first started putting together uh, a brand, a blend and, and all that? uh bradley let's go with you first yeah it really just sat, started with me and alex sitting down and being like where where do we start where do we start what's the beginning so uh we sat there and we discussed names and what would the blend be like and what do we want the first cigar from alec and bradley to be like and so it it really just i mean it was days and weeks of just discussing and of how this is all going to work out for us um and then it was time to put everything into action and so our first cigar was blind faith but it before blind faith it was not blind faith it was something completely else and so we went down a path of pretty much finishing complete packaging bands and and boxes vistas the whole the whole piece and uh i actually had to come to everyone in the office because i've i'm the one that that was handling the packaging and, and basically tell everyone hey we're we're scratching all this, you know, the, the three, four, five months we've spent working on this. Like, I don't like it. And I don't think this is the right move. Um, oh, wow. And uh, <laughs> it took lots of uh, kind of sleepless nights of just staring at the wall, which is where I seem to do my best thinking. And we came out with uh, with blind faith. And that was our, our first cigar that we released as Alec and Bradley. But yeah, to be able to work on it with Alec, um, you know, go down the factories, blend together. I saw how excited Alec was to go down to the factories, which um, like just made me super happy to do this with him. Mm -hmm. So um, it, it all started just us talking about what we wanted to do, what we wanted people to see from us. So it was, it was so a lot of fun. Can I, can I, and before you jump into that piece, Alec, if we can step back. So Bradley graduates from college have you already been working at the fact or have you already been working at Alec Bradley at that point? Yeah. So I had been working here full time for three years, but um, I would say two years part time before that. And I spent a lot of, like I said, a lot of time here um, in the summers on the phones or in the warehouse, whatever it was. So I had spent a lot of time here before Bradley had entered. And, um, but when he jumped in, he jumped in full force. I'll tell you that. Awesome. And so Bradley graduates, comes mm -hmm. onto the team. What does that dynamic look like for you guys? So at first it was very difficult, right? Because when I came in, I came in with a bunch of opinions and I was loud <laughs> and I, I, I knew nothing, but I thought I knew everything. Right. And then when Bradley came in, he did the same thing. Yeah. And he came in loud, thought he knew everything. I'm not going to say he knew nothing. I'll let him say that himself. And um, <laughs> give me my, give me my turn after this. Make yeah, sure we get yeah. to that part. And um, so we butted heads at first for a while, 
And then when we, I'll jump into this part now. When we decided to come out with Alec and Bradley, Bradley actually isn't giving himself enough credit because he it was his idea to come out with to start our own brand. And I had always thought that potentially we would come out with our own cigars under Alec Bradley. And he said, "Why don't we just come out with our own thing completely, and do this do this ourselves?" And I would say all throughout Blind Faith was it was tough. We we fought a decent amount. Uh, going back and forth, and that's when we kind of realized we needed to separate responsibilities a little bit. Um, and we did do that, and Gatekeeper and Kintsugi have been a lot easier since then. Still tough, but our, I mean, our relationship from the beginning of when Bradley started to now is night and day. Our work relationship, our personal relationship has always been great, but our work relationship is just so much better now. Yeah. Awesome. What's your take yeah. on it, Bradley? I came in with a lot of opinions. And <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know some stuff, but I also knew other stuff. And people need to listen sometimes instead of just saying, like, well, that's that's just how things are done. And I'm like, well, you know, things can be done differently. Exactly. Uh, so I agree. I agree. Yeah. So I, I came in hot, especially on a couple of things. And um some sometimes and i think a lot within the cigar industry there's a lot of like well that's just how things have always been done and yeah. and then i think there needs to be a reminder that we're in the 21st century and yeah so the, why, don't, why don't you tell them about your first two days what you thought that like working in this office actually was uh smoking and drinking um, <laughs> wait a minute that's not what it is that's smoking is half of it drinking is the other half um <laughs> so because we have a good we have a good uh uh relationship with with glenn fiddick and uh they had just released their glenn fiddick ipa which is my favorite and they wanted us to pair a cigar with it so my first two days were literally spent in the conference room smoking and drinking trying to find a pairing for their new uh whiskey which you poor and, guy and oh, after the best, second two day best, two best days and then from there on just <laughs> Yeah, so after the second day, Bradley walked out at 6 o'clock and goes, do we get to do this every day? <laughs> everyone, everyone started cracking up. Um, so I'm just assuming that there are some sh shared resources with Alec Bradley and Alec and Bradley. Can you break down what's yours versus what's Alec Bradley's? You want me to answer that? Um, sorry, Alec. Okay, so... Pretty much uh, most of our the resources are identical, except for the fact that um, on the Alec and Bradley projects, it is our blends off of our palettes, our designs. Um, we have full say in everything that goes on. We do occasionally ask opinions of either our father or of Ralph, the vice president, or Jonathan Lipson, who works very closely with me and Bradley. But for the most part, it's our decisions. Other than that, um, I mean, we do have money tied up in the Alec and Bradley production, but other than that, our sales reps, our distribution channels, all that is the same. Okay. Yeah. Same corporate office. Yes. Yeah. Factories. Back um, home, yeah. yeah. Except oh. we work with um, Ernesto on the gatekeeper. So yeah. that's, that's one thing that's different. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and that's uh that's actually kind of a good segue because um, I want to, I, I want to say congrats to you guys uh, on on Gatekeeper getting number seven on the cigar aficionado list for Dude. 2020. I mean, thank you, huge, huge congrats to you guys because thank you. for uh, it, it's got to be an absolutely incredible feeling looking at the list and looking all, at all the names on the list. I mean, you already mentioned Ernesto Perez Carrillo, and you've got the Padrones and the Fuentes and the My Fathers and and so many storied brands with histories mm -hmm. that go back to Cuba for generations. And yep. and to what was what was that experience like when first of all, how did you first find out, Bradley, what how did you first find out that your cigar <laughs> made number seven? So I was sitting there like everyone else, just refreshing, refresh, 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 <laughs> refresh. Um, uh, I also have coupon in the background and I know like the day before that I was, I got it before Coop got it. So I'm like, all right, I'm going to get it before Coop gets it for sure. So refresh, refresh, refresh. And then I hear Alec go, gatekeeper got number seven. And like Coop hadn't heard it. I hadn't seen it on the refresh and someone sent him a picture. 
and I go, Alec, shut up. Like, don't say that. I want to experience it like the way it should be experienced. <laughs> and then like 10 seconds later, I'm still refreshing. Coop is like, I can Bradley gatekeeper number seven. And I'm like, Coop, shut up. I need to experience it the way I want to experience it. And I hit refresh for like another, I swear to God, 30 minutes. I'm like, there's no, I'm not getting on my computer. It's just not going to happen. Yeah. So, um, like five minutes after Coop announced it or two minutes, I don't know. I like, I accepted it like, <laughs> Oh my God. And Alec and I just had a big hug and, pop some champagne right at the beginning and we start getting drunk and it was uh <laughs> it was like it was the craziest experience the craziest experience and i i still wow. don't i still don't believe it honestly i don't think it's yeah. real i think it, i think people are playing a very long con on us <laughs> <laughs> and Alan, very long. leading up to that what was the buzz like what uh when did you realize that you guys had a shot at that top 25 Someone told me that um, because we got 90, 91 on Gatekeeper that we were a contender for a top 25. But I was like, there's no way that, you know, a company in their second year is even, even has a chance. I guess technically in our third year now, but even has a chance at top 25. And I was like, other Alec Bradleys have an opportunity also. So if we do get it, if Gatekeeper does get it, it will be, you know, somewhere in the you know, 15 through 25 range, but I don't even think that will happen. And when it hit number seven, I mean, someone texted me saying, Hey, congratulations on number seven. And I was like, Oh, on whose list? And they're like, cigar aficionado. <laughs> and they sent me the picture. And I was like, are you kidding me? <laughs> and completely freaked out. I think we started drinking at what? 10, whatever time it comes out at 10, 10 30 in the morning till past six o'clock nonstop all day. Just, celebrating and having a great time and yeah it, it was fantastic and i told bradley actually we should just retire right now <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, i said we we should just yeah just close down alec and bradley <laughs> our first cigar that was rated by cigar aficionado is also hit top 25 and like we're done there's nothing yeah. else to be done here <laughs> so let's just close up shop that is just i mean it's it's absolutely incredible and um coming you know coming out of that you guys i i assume uh well the the when did, did the kintsugi re release before that was announced or after it released before before, before but, yeah um it wasn't a contender because it didn't release they didn't rate it it didn't release and it didn't rate before october whatever the date is yeah essentially. yeah but the i mean that's all uh, and this is uh, the first time for Garrett and I trying this cigar, and yeah, I was just going to suggest um, a check in because the the honestly the pairing the pairing and you guys know because you guys do um, a, a lot with whiskeys and pairing cigars with with bourbons can be tricky because bourbons bourbons can be um, you know they can they can tend to dominate certain cigars for sure uh, but it, this cigar stands up to the bourbon just fine there's no there's no issues with with the cigar getting buried by the flavors in the bourbon. Mm -hmm. It's actually a really nice compliment. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yeah. The flavors are, it, it's smooth, but bold at the same time. It's, um, it is just, it, it's a delicious flavor bomb. It's like a perfect steak. That's not over seasoned, <laughs> over salty. It is just delicious. You guys, oh, thank you. Rockstar. Appreciate thank it you. guys. Thank you so yeah, much. Seriously. So the, uh, when you guys are looking at design and cigar names and branding, new new ideas, where do you guys, um, Bradley? I'm going to start with you. Where do you look for inspiration when you're thinking up for uh, the next big idea? Everywhere, yeah. literally. I, I, like, I mean, I, I watch a lot of TV and movies, so like little things that they may reference or I may not know, and I'm like, oh, that that sounds really cool. Like, uh, I like that. So I was, uh, I was, for example, I was watching a show on Amazon prime called hunters. Yes. And, and in the show, they are playing chess and they say, uh, that the movie is called the queen's gambit. And I'm like, Oh, that's a super cool name. I've never heard of anything like that. Like I'm going to jot that one down. And then like week oh, within the week I trademarked it 
And uh, and then next thing you know, a few months later, Queen's Gambit, the show comes out. And I'm like, oh, my God, that was such a cool name. Like, how, like, what are the chances? Like, and it, it's just like we wanted to do like a chessboard out of the box and stuff like that. So people can play at the lounges. I'm like, this is going to be the coolest most fun thing like it's going to come with pieces like what a cool fun idea yeah uh and then after they they announced after that show came out i'm like i can't do it now can't do it yeah um so it's it's anywhere and everywhere um it's you just got to look for you know look in the right places pay attention write it down in the in the really long notes app of of weird and stupid names <laughs> um and then you pitch them to uh to alec and you see if he if he fancies it or gives it a nay. Uh, and then I try to convince him, Hey, no, this is actually a really cool name. It's really fun. Let's do it. And then we, we try and hash it out and we'll see if I win or not. Well, as a former tournament chess player, I will encourage you to continue with the chess themed something. Cause there's really nothing out there that is very, that has that that chess background and there's a lot of cigar smokers who are into chess and cool. i've got some ideas you know there's a lot Garrett. of really <laughs> great chess terms um you hit me up I you hit me up after this and we, we talk you. some names out okay yeah. all right awesome alec and bradley and garrett Hell yeah. <laughs> whatever. <laughs> whatever 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 is, sorry i'm with those guys <laughs> i don't know it doesn't have it doesn't doesn't quite have the same ring to it. I don't know. Garrett, roll, off, Garrett, roll off the tongue. Garrett goes first. Garrett and Alec and Bradley. <laughs> that's the next. That's the next one. Oh, I love it. I'm done. So, Alec, what was? Uh, um, where did the for the for the first release, Blind Faith? Where did that? Uh, where did the 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 look and the name come from? So honestly, Bradley's realm within Alec and Bradley starts with concepts and design. So I have very little to do with that until he comes to me with the concept. And then we both sit down with the designer and talk about design. And then I kind of step away for a little while and then come back and step away and come back and give my two cents, screw everything up. And then we start from <laughs> scratch. And, you know, that, that tends to be how that works out. But um, Bradley had come up with a different idea before Blind Faith, a different name, a different concept. And we were working on that for a while, as he mentioned earlier. And, you know, I wasn't in love with it at, at first. And it, it was starting to, to grow on me a little. It wasn't my favorite thing. And then the day he came to me and said, this idea sucks. I hate it. We're starting from scratch. I said, thank God. <laughs> um, <laughs> Woo! And, we were already um, working on the blend at that point. I think we were somewhere crazy, like 30 blends deep at that point, trying to figure out the perfect blend for our first launch because we wanted something that really um, measured out perfectly between strength and flavor. So where you weren't losing flavor because you had too much strength and you weren't losing strength because you had too much flavor. We wanted this perfect mesh. And um, then Bradley came up with Blind Faith and absolutely crushed it. So and so that project before and and we don't have to get into specific details about it but that's and i've heard this from other people in the cigar business um regardless of how many years of experience they have in the business that that sometimes you go through project and even guys i know in the beer business that have been through that where they they put together a blend and they put together a branding scheme and the whole bit and then just like at the 11th hour, they sit down and they look at the whole picture and they realize this, we can't put this on the market. It's just not right. That's got to be to go through all that work. And uh, so, so Bradley, was that it's because you, you had to come to this realization and say, look, I know we've put in all this work. I know it's been blood, sweat and tears, but, but this is not the right product for us to, to market. What, what was that decision like? Uh, it was, it was tough. Um, yeah. Uh, I'll give a little bit of the, the, not the reasoning, but how I, I came to the conclusion. And I was actually watching an interview that had both Pete Johnson and John Huber in it. Um, and, you know, two people that I, I definitely look up to in this industry. Um, and they said something that just kind of hit home with me. And I was already 
you know, contemplating, you know, is this the right, you know, packaging? Is this the right look for our first release? And something that they said just kind of stuck with me. And I was watching it at night and uh, uh, I, I, I realized I was like, no, this, this isn't right. Like it doesn't feel right. And um, it's just, I, I, I can't go through with it. It's, it's going to bomb. And, uh, and so I had to first, I, like I said before, I went to Alec, then I went to my father, our vice president, our VP of sales. And I told everyone separately, like, Hey, like, I don't think this is the right move. And they're like, like seriously, like, I know Alec was relieved, but like, Hey, we've been doing this for, for at least three, four or five months. Like you're telling me you want to start all over again. Like it's going to delay a lot of things. And I was like, yeah, I'd rather not go through with this. Um, I think it's a poor decision. So it was uh, emotionally, like I felt really bad, but I knew at the end of the day, it was what was best for us. So Yeah. I feel like we had a lot of <clears throat> lessons very quickly when it came to launching cigars, that being one of them. Um, working on the blend um, until we thought it was perfect was another one. Because um, I think at the end of the day, total blends, even including minor changes on the blend, until Blind Faith came out, it was somewhere around 38 total blends before we hit what we wanted. Yeah. And so I think we learned a lot of lessons very quickly. It took us from the day we the day we started to the day we, we launched, it was almost a, about a year, about 11, 11 and a half months. Oh, wow. So I think we learned a lot of lessons about the industry and the right things to do very quickly. And then you go work with Ernesto and he makes it seem so easy <laughs> and it, it's, it's frustrating. <laughs> I bet that's oh maddening. absolutely. Yeah. So so was I mean was that first project into production already? Were there were there already cigars in the aging room, or had it not gotten that far yet? It hadn't gotten that far yet. Okay, okay, yeah. And so prior to to you know you guys deciding to go, if we can go back again, um, when you guys were younger, did you go to the factories? Did you go to the farms? Did you ever do any of that? Mm -hmm. No, Nothing. not at all. Okay, but there you were, were just. Too but many stories. What was that? I'm sorry. But, but you worked in distribution in the warehouse, you said. Yes. Yeah. So, okay. So no time spent in uh, Nicaragua until... Uh, until until we started with the company. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you were really coming in fresh to the, to the business. You know, uh, you know, unlike a lot of other family businesses where the kids come up and, you know, they at least get an idea of how all the cogs and everything is working. I mean, you guys, I'm sure got a sense a little bit of what things work, but you really came in fresh to all of this. Yeah. Um, when it We're, came to the, to go ahead, Bradley. No, after you. Okay. When it came to the uh, tobacco side. Yeah. That was something completely new to us. Um, I spent a lot of time myself around uh, business meetings and just my dad would call them sit down and shut up meetings where I just sat in and, listened and didn't say a word and just to kind of understand how the business ran a little bit. And at the same time, I was hanging out at my local cigar shop way too much. And I would kind of help out at the register and do different odd things here and there. Mm -hmm. And they would give me, pay me in cigars essentially, Yeah. but they would unband them and they would just give me the cigar, make me smoke it and then tell me what it was afterward. And that was a big thing for me to learn my palate. And figure out what I liked, what I didn't like, start to understand, you know, tobaccos from what regions I liked and which ones I didn't, which brands I liked, which ones I didn't. And that was kind of valuable within itself as well. That's huge. Yeah. And how about for you, Bradley, when, uh, you know, you're getting into tobacco, what did, mm -hmm. what did that process look like for you? Um, I think it, it went just like everyone else's like visit to the factory. Basically, like I, I, my, my first visit, I think is like everyone else's, like you're starting from scratch, like here's, you know, the seedlings and here are uh, the farms and fermentation and sorting. I, I, you know, starting from, from step one. Um, and I feel like I'm still only at step two. Like um, I, there, there's so much to learn and we've only been doing this for a short time. So, um, you know, I, I, I still feel like I don't, I don't know so much about the tobacco, but I'm still so eager to learn. And, you know, we're, we're lucky to have, you know, my father and our vice president Ralph that have been doing this for over 25 years. So, yeah, um, it, it's, uh, it's a, to say that we're doing this solely on our own is, 
isn't true. We have people that, um, you know, look out for us and are always looking to help us. And, you know, we're thankful. But what's really cool is, I mean, in any business, uh, people should have mentors. And it's fantastic that you have such mm-hmm. direct access to people like your, fra- your father and others. Um, but what I love about this story is that you guys really are doing it on your own. Your dad isn't this guy hand holding you through this whole process, you know, giving you all of these things. You guys are doing that process the real way, you know, and yeah. you're, how, fi- you're figuring it out for yourself. Yeah. And, and that's, there's a, uh, there, uh, I'm not going to name names, but there are companies in the business that, you know, just, you know, take things and slap a name on it and, and put it in boxes and sell it. And you guys aren't doing that. You guys, yeah, you had a lot of, of, of help. Like, like you said, Bradley, you've, you've got your dad and other people around you, but, but, uh, you're actually putting in the work and I, and I respect the hell out of that. Absolutely. Honestly. Yeah. We're, we're fairly lucky yeah. with, Thank yeah, you. with some of the mentors that we have. Um, we have Ugo who runs Rices Cubanas. We have Nestor Andreas Placencia. That has been a lot of big help to us. Um, Ernesto, obviously a big help to us as well. And then our father and Ralph also. So we do have a lot of great mentors within this industry. And we've been very lucky and fortunate that we have these people helping us out. Um, but I do have one one quick story about, <laughs> about Bradley on his first trip down to uh, Nicaragua in Honduras. That was fantastic. Do it. Do it. So we were, um, I think, were we at Placencia in Honduras at the time or Honduras or Nicaragua? I can't remember. And um, Honduras. we were both, we were both wanting cigar Honduras. We were both wanting cigars and we got in the van with Nestor Andreas and he grabbed my cigar for me cause he wanted to try it. And he's like, mm, it's okay. It doesn't suck, but it's not great either. And then he goes, and then he grabs Bradley's cigar and starts smoking it like just out of our hands and just, just start smoking it. And he goes, Oh my God, this is amazing. <laughs> what did you, what did you do? And Bradley had him going for like two, three minutes and then he started laughing and he goes, yeah, that's a black market. I was so bad that I had to put it down. I just let up a black market. And he's like, you mother. Like he was so mad because he had him going for like two or three minutes about how he blended that cigar. And it was his first cigar he ever blended. Oh dude, that's fantastic. It was really yeah. funny. I could, I could see Nestor's face right now. Oh yeah, that is yeah, fantastic. that's awesome. He, he still brings it yeah, up all so, the time. It was funny. Yeah, it was good. Oh yeah. man, that's good stuff. Mm-hmm. So, and, and honestly, I I'm with you guys when it comes to um, the process and 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 tasting and things like that because, I mean, I I've G- Garrett's been been tasting and reviewing cigars longer than I have, um, and I have since about 2015 or so. Uh, as far as I mean smoking a long time before that but actually putting in time to taste what i taste and take notes and stuff like that and when my ego gets the better of me sometimes and i'm like yeah i got this thing figured out you know sometimes i'll i'll get you know a a few things right or i'll nail a cigar uh you know on naming it or whatever and and then the next thing you know i'm smoking something and i don't have a clue what it is and it's something super obvious and i'm like i'm such an idiot i don't have it i have no clue what i'm doing i should just quit (laughs) that's that's tough man it's it's not easy i mean you can't you can't be so hard on yourself there you know how many days i feel like i'm like oh this (laughs) blending thing i i got it i got it and then for a week straight i'll feel like is my palate off is there something wrong what what's going on with me like and you second guess yourself constantly it's just it's just part of the process and you do have to trust your palate but at the same time i mean it's such a difficult thing when i remember the very first video review i ever did and so I, I filmed this whole thing. I set up this little studio in my garage and <laughs> I went back to, you know, edit the video and, and go through and I'm, and I'm rewatching it. And like halfway through the, the, I'm talking about the notes that I'm getting from the cigar and I say, I'm getting a Woody. <laughs> and I paused for like the long <laughs> And I just completely died and realized that uh, doing live reviews was was probably not going to be. <laughs> <laughs> what were you smoking that gave you a wedding? 
<laughs> it was uh, it was a uh, it was a Romeo uh, cedar. Uh, it was a oh the, I ced, to, the cedros I, the cedros. Yeah. So eighteen. I don't know if that's a compliment to Romeo or not, but. <laughs> Absolutely is. Yeah, Woody. Well, I will say this. I expect a copy of that video footage in my email box tomorrow morning. If there was that if if there was ever an intro uh to a cigar show, that right. would be it. Yeah. Absolutely. The cigar gave me a Woody. <laughs> but yeah, it, it's uh it's it's such a cool process that you guys and so many other cigar uh you know cigar brand owners get to go through is is that tasting process and mm -hmm. and going through all these different blends and trying these different tobaccos and um you know that's that's it's such a fun part of the process it's also it can be a frustrating part of the process but because of the way things have been in the world you know you guys uh, pretty much pretty much nobody has been able to travel to factories and things like that so how has that changed your process you know are you are you guys uh, it, you know, if you're working on new stuff for future releases, have you are you guys just having blends sent to you and and things like that without having time to sit down in the factory? Um, it's kind of a mixed mixed thing. I kind of learned on my last few trips down that I could email ahead of profiles I was looking for, and also blends I just kind of wrote down in my notes that I thought might work out, and so I would send those down about two months before just so they would get have time to roll it get some aging whatever it is and um but, and also we blend while we're there but it kind of speeds up the process a little bit so i was doing that anyways already at this at that point and um i think for kintsugi it wasn't an issue because i had blended that before the p pandemic hit so it wasn't a big deal but because of the pandemic it kind of slowed down everything with with production but um kind of emailing ahead has made things easier in terms of what i want to try and by the time i get there and um but then i, I started going back down to the factories again in i want to say september so it hasn't been that much of a delay okay as you might as you might think okay and bradley has a trip to the dr when in like a couple weeks right yeah, March eighth. Oh, nice. Yeah. So okay. we're we're still going down. That's good. That's awesome. good because yeah. I yeah I know so mm -hmm. many people that haven't been able to get down there. So I'm glad you guys have been able to, um, because it, I think I I agree. It's it, I think it's important to, um, to be there. There's there's just something about it that that puts your mind in the right frame. You know. Yeah, and also our our VP Ralph is down there right now. So anything that I kind of mentioned ahead of time that I, I i thought i was going to be going on that trip and it didn't end up happening but he's down there he knows exactly what i'm looking for half the time we have very similar palettes so that helps a lot but then i'm going to end up planning another trip probably in a few weeks down there so whether it works out or not i'll be down there myself okay yeah um so that kind of leads into uh i know that you know, brand brand owners and blenders are always working on, you know, the next project. So um, I assume you guys are working on some, you don't have to give details if you want to, we'd love it. But, mm -hmm. you know, are, 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 what are you, what are you guys, uh, what are you guys working on? We're working on stuff. Yeah. We're working, we're working on fun stuff. We're working mm -hmm. on, you know, tasty stuff, mm -hmm. uh, limited stuff. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> So we got we got plenty of stuff that will be uh, coming stuff. out. This, we got plenty of stuff that will be coming out this year. Uh, some exciting stuff. So mm -hmm. I, I think there's going to be plenty of cigars for people to to try from us, and uh, I think it's going to be an exciting year for for Alec Bradley and Alec and Bradley. So you right guys, now. you heard it here first. There's going to be tasty fun stuff, fun stuff, tasty. Yeah. Stuff. And exciting stuff, so. and those yeah. two, and those things can mesh together and, also. And, and I think I said I said limited stuff as well. Oh, yes, limited. limited yeah. Don't forget yeah. limited stuff. We're Alec. actually working on a lot of new stuff for Alec Bradley. There's a couple Alec and Bradley projects that are starting up right now, but um, you'll probably see a lot of the Alec Bradley stuff before you see potentially anything from Alec and Bradley. Can you? Not that it's too far away, but 
Can you translate any of those terms for us, Alec? <laughs> yeah. So we're working on um, tasty stuff. Okay. We're working on exciting stuff. Okay. Limited stuff. Mm -hmm. Limited. And what do you say? Cool stuff? Fun, fun, um, fun, 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 fun stuff. Fun, no, fun stuff. Fun stuff. Okay. Yeah. So exactly we have, we, we, um, on some of the really? Alec, Alec and Bradley things that we're working on, you might see one regular production, one limited production in the next year. And on the Alec Bradley stuff, um, at least what, maybe two limiteds and two full productions within if, the if next year, is, year and a half. If that is in details, then I don't know what it is. I, I don't know what, yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I, I don't think we can get any more detail than that. That's perfect. <laughs> no. Fantastic. Exactly. That's about all I can say. Do you guys come up with like cool code names for cigars? Like we're going to code name this Cobra or <laughs> Maverick. Um, I don't know about cool names, maybe like maybe stupid names, but yeah, I, I not really like one, some, one time. Some, sometimes what go one time there was a, a blend code that was MLF and it just became the MILF cigar. So that <laughs> That worked. So well, that you know, it was it was you know, codename MILF. So at it's that age, point. so it's aged for a long time then. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's a true story. That really happened. And it's expensive. <laughs> yes, very. Oh, yeah. I'm a terrible person. Oh boy. Uh, so, so get what back are, on the rails. What are you uh, of all the you know the the stuff from uh, from all the brands? Um, because for for me and Garrett, I know sometimes we go through phases where we're really into Sumatra for a while. We're really into Broadleaf for a while. We're really into Connecticut for a while. So so is there a particular facing? you know, from all the brands that you guys uh, find yourself reaching for a lot right now, just, just because it's just hitting your palate during this time period in the, in the right way. Uh, Bradley, you go first. That's tough. Um, I, I'm like a, a person of habit and I don't like change. So like whatever I I'm on, I'm on. Mm -hmm. So it's been Kintsugi's in the morning, afternoon time. And then, Prensados towards the end. So Kintsugi and Prensado have been the two that I am just like trying the different sizes. I'm spoken Prensado Churchill's, Prensado Corona Gorda's, uh, Bustos, Tor. Like I'm, I'm hitting the whole line. Um, so those are the two cigars I, I can't stop picking up. And then a MILF at uh, the cap. <laughs> yeah. Night cap. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. That could go a lot of different ways. Alec, you go. You go. Get for me, me it's it's kind of just whatever's in my vicinity. If someone puts something on my desk or whatever, I just kind of grab that. Other than that, I um, it's it's like sizes for me. Um, I'm a I'm a small ring gauge smoker, so if I see something near me that's a Corona, Corona Gorda, Lancero, Lance, whatever it is, if it's under a fifty and it's in my vicinity, I'm probably smoking it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, that's uh, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. Is it time? Um, yeah. Is, yeah. Is it yeah. Time? I think it's time. I think it's time. All right. It is time for this week's Numero de los Muertos. And as always, Numero de los Muertos is brought to us by Smoke In Cigars. So please visit SmokeIn.com for our friends at Abe, or our, our friend Abe DeBabna and all the crew over there at Smoke In Cigars. And I want to give a little shout out to Abe and the whole crew at Smoke In. So uh, this past Saturday, they had the the Great Smoke virtual experience, and that thing was an absolute lights-out hit. What an absolute incredible, absolutely incredible event that they put on uh, with Abe and Michael Herklotz and, and just all the people that were involved. It was an incredible event. Uh, I congratulate them on, on everything that they did, and we look forward to uh, what they're going to bring to uh, the Great Smoke in 2022. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So what do we have this week, Gary? All right, this week. So I got I kind of have a couple numbers for us to, to try and get there. All right. So between 1969 and, nine, and 2017, there was at least one death a year from this. But in the last 10 years, 
there has been an average of four deaths a year in the U.S. Sounds like a low number. Yeah, it is a low number. But the very yeah. first, so the very first record, official record of this was in 1864. Okay, uh, I want to take a, I want to take a guess. Yeah, go, man. I think it's shark attacks. Wow, you know uh, the numbers aren't very far off, but it wow. is not shark attacks. Did did we do shark attacks? I did. Yeah, yeah, Garrett did oh. shark. Attacks. Okay. That was a great guess, though. Yeah. All right, so... That sounded right. The first one was 1869. Four. 1864. 1864. And... This is tough. There was one per year up until... At least. At no, least. there was at least one per year. So every year there's been at least one since 1969. Mm-hmm. And then okay. in the last how many years? Ten it was, years, it's four a year. It's, it's average four a year in yep. the United wow. States. In the U.S., I'm so are we that. are we allowed to ask questions like yeah. along the way about okay? So I got, want to see what Matt says. So we got uh, um, fighting is not correct, um, John. It is not medical. So it's not siblings fighting. <laughs> siblings that would be, that would be a good one. Is that would be me and Alec. It's yeah. not. Um, it's not medical. It's okay. not medical. Is it? Uh, uh, are it, does it involve vehicles? It does not involve vehicles. Okay. No means of transportation whatsoever. Is most likely. Okay, so it's not like those little okay. scooter. It's not those little scooter things people are renting now, or Correct. like whatever. Well, okay. not definitely not since it started in 1864 was the first recorded. Yeah, um, you don't know what kind of. I don't. I don't think they, they had. had electric scooters. Um, have to be what, electric. A, what, a, what about <laughs> like uh, like slipping on ice? That's a that's a good guess too. I think I was thinking like alligator or crocodile attack. Honestly, those are good guesses. But nope, we are we're still pretty cold. Um, cold ice. Um, it could be. I'm sure it's most you know it happens most of the time on land, but it can also happen on the water. Dysentery. It is not dysentery. Um, <laughs> 1864. That's a good guess for 1864. Thank you. Um, dying of thirst. Ooh, that's oh. a good one too. No, it is not dying of thirst. Um, uh, exploding manhole covers. <laughs> I don't think they had manhole covers in 1864. I think they did. It can happen on land, but it can also happen in the water. Yes, Chad, it's U.S. only. Yep, uh, U.S. only. Is it is it heat exhaustion? Oh, that's no. a good guess. We kind of got a lot of guesses stuff. right now. I got nothing. I am at a loss. Um, is it some kind of attack? Is it, it from an animal? Can we get that? No, it is not animal related. Oh is it, no! Would it be considered a work a workplace incident? It is not a workplace. Not incident. a workplace incident. And it's not medical. Mm-mm. Um, are animals involved? No, I asked. Yeah, oh, no, you did. no okay. animals. Yeah. Okay. Um, um is alcohol is, is drinking of alcohol involved? Usually. Ooh. Usually. Actually, actually uh, alcohol is the number one cause of this, but there's a there's a an overarching uh. Is category it, is it dehydration john is, says nope that's a good one what Not about dehydration. falling down the stairs no sir <laughs> no is it uh, alcohol poisoning um, is it stepping in front of a street car getting run over by a street car no okay um so we need more here yeah okay. more hints the, um, the demographic is 99 percent male between the ages of 18 and 19 years old. What? Is it getting killed at boot camp? No. But it has to do with alcohol, but there's an overall category that trumps the alcohol part. Mm-hmm. Is it uh, fraternity pledging? Hazing? Yes. Hazing? It is hazing. Oh my <sighs> God. That was tough. That was a very tough one. Good job. Jeez. Wow. Our first time on the show, and you throw that at us? Come on. <laughs> that was a tough one. So the, yeah. first, the first recorded one was 1864. 1864. Please tell me it was Harvard. 
Cambridge. No, but you said U.S. only. Um, I forget. Wow. Cool. I don't want to okay. miss misquote. Um, wow. But yeah. So this has happened on the water also. Well, a lot of times, you know, hazing will they'll go out into the ocean or on a lake and have their little boat parties or whatever. But I'm on a boat. I'm on a boat. My D's in a box. You know that whole <laughs> thing. Um, but alcohol and um, uh, it's, actually it's my one, favorite segment. It's ours too. It is ours too. Love this part. That was a good one. That was. You got fun. another one, lined up, teed up, ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta wait till next time you're on the show. Yeah. Oh, okay. 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 Um, so yeah, that. Uh, hazing. Uh, also, uh, another uh, PSA to, uh, you know, hazing. Let's. Yep. Dial uh, it back. Yeah, and uh, the number one cause obviously was alcohol poisoning, via, the tampon. Um, I'm going to have to ask you to go back there. What? Can you explain that, please? So uh, if you soak a tampon in high octane and you insert it. Nope. Nope. Stop. Nope. In the chute. It is the apparently the quickest way to get hammered. Jeez. And that has been the leading cause over the last 10 years of alcohol poisoning and deaths. You're welcome, by the way, for that. Oh, wow. A yeah, high point in the show right and, here. Is, and uh, you said it's predominantly male. Yeah, 99% male. Um, like in the last 10 years, I think only one was a female for hazing deaths. With that's alcohol sub tampons. Okay. So, so has yeah. there been anyone that's Same. gotten this uh, segment on the first guess? Or what, like who got the least amount yeah. of guesses? There, w you know. there was somebody. God, I can't. Somebody within the l the last month or so, dude. That, no, it uh, was right away. It they was got bear. It. Oh, was it? What was, it was the bear? That's, that's that sounds like bear. Yeah, last week. Yeah, bear. Just Shit, what was it? I don't even. What was this question? No. Um, damn it! If any, I do if, so many, <laughs> if anybody remembers, put it in the. Con I don't remember what it was, but what it was, was it, it was right it? away. He just, <laughs> boom. But Carlito Fuente, one of like the biggest honor, Carlito Fuente. Oh guessed yeah, that Numero was de los Muertos a couple weeks ago when we had Jose Blanco on. Yeah, uh, but his first guess was was probably one of my favorite guesses too. Uh, Titty bars was his guess. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the right guess, but he got the right guess just a few minutes later. Yeah, very close, very close. Yeah, it was bare last week. Chad, do you remember what it was? Yeah, Chad, if you remember what it was, put I don't remember what the ca category was last Terrible. week. Terrible, we should, but so that was this week's Numero, Numero de, de los Muertos. Muertos. Numero de los Muertos brought to you by Smoke In Cigars. So, guys, now it's time for the fun stuff. All right. Alec, I'm starting with you on this first one. Yes, sir. If you could hear the thoughts of one living person for 10 minutes, who would it be and why? Bradley. Oh. Oh. <laughs> it's, not, it's not how it works, bro. Not how it works, big bro. Um, I'll take that answer, but I'll ask you for a second. A, a second um, let's see. Let's see. Bill Gates. Oh, I love it. He yeah. It a few times. Yeah, for sure. Definitely. Uh, Bradley. Um, Chris Greer, the GM of the Miami Dolphins. I want to know if we are getting to Sean Watson and why we don't have him already because we have Houston's first and second round pick. How do I kick Bradley out of here? For this year. So how do we not just trade him back and get to Sean Watson? We give him some extra. We give him to a 10 minutes. That's all I need to know if we actually have a shot at getting him. Your answer was longer than the amount of time you could actually hear what his thoughts. So that wasn't a long answer. I needed to give an explanation as to why Chris Greer. Well, and if we don't you know, get, get to Sean Watson, I'm gonna be upset. It's a good answer. I'll be honest with you, and I'm no expert, but you know, I dabble a little bit in in reading about football. I'd say when it comes to Deshaun Watson, be careful what you wish for. I'm not sure if he's uh, if he's all that he uh, appears to be. That's all I'm saying. You got it. No, you got to tell me why. You can't just say that. I I don't think he has 
I don't. I, he has he has the legs and he has the mobility. I don't think he has the vision down the field that you're looking for. I think that he was throwing to Will Fuller down the field plenty of times. Yeah. And Will, Will Fuller made a name for himself because he could run very fast and Sean was hitting those those targets downfield. Yeah. I'm telling you, it's a, it, he's a pro bowler. He's a big step up from Tua, who is, as I knew, a bust. I agree he's a step up from Tua. Absolutely. Yep. That's a big, big step up. Yeah. All yeah. right. So, Bradley, you go first on this next one. If you were about to get into a fight, mm-hmm. what would your soundtrack music be? Ooh. Um, okay, I'm in between two songs. I'm going to go with 50 Cent, Many Men. Dope. If that song doesn't pump you up, I don't. nothing else will. I like it. I completely yeah. just forgot my song as you said that. I'm not nice. going to lie. Good. I was like, oh, good. that's a good choice. Wait, what was I thinking? Um, I, I so can what, give you my other my other one, Alec, if you want. You can borrow it. What was it. that? It was uh, Enter Sandman. Oh, that's a good one. Another excellent choice. Yeah, that's a good one. Both good choices. Thank you. Okay. okay. But you can't take it. I, I use both. I was going to go with the um, Little John song. What is it called? Like, Turn Down for What? That just hits hard. I feel like when you're pummeling someone's face, that's exactly the song that you want playing in the background. I dig it. Yeah. Yeah. It's my my youngest son, uh, even, even years ago when he was only, I don't know, six or seven years old. He used to beg us to put that song on. <laughs> yeah, he, just he would just thrash around the living room to that song, not having a clue <laughs> what he was listening to. But he would just That's thrash awesome. the living room and get it's out. It's just the a room. drop on that song. Yeah, it's yeah. great for just you know, fist to cheek action. Yes, no problem. Absolutely. Even yeah. even if it's happening to you, even if you're the one, yeah, getting punched in the at face, least like, I'm rocking to the song. At, like, at least it's a good yeah. song. Yeah. yeah. All right, uh, Bradley, choose one of the following. <clears throat> you could hit a home run as a starting pitcher. You could score a touchdown as a defensive lineman. You could score a goal in a hockey game as the goalie or score a goal in a soccer game as the goalie. Uh, goalie in a hockey game, hands down. I feel like it has yeah, to be. Yeah, I agree with that. I feel like it has to be harder, even maybe in soccer. I don't know if that's true. I get uh, – I feel like it has to be harder than even soccer. I think only Martin Brodeur was the, maybe the only one to do it. So I'm going to go with, with that. I think it's all, in the NHL, I think it's only happened seven times. How, much in, how many times off. in soccer? I was way off then. I, I think soccer is, is... It's multiple times a year. Yeah, it's it, it, it okay. a few times a year. Yeah, I played lacrosse growing up, and we had this goalie that just every time he got the ball, felt like he needed to run all the way down the downfield and try to score. And he did it maybe a couple times a season, but doing it in hockey just seems so much tougher. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I would go with that also. That's Is a that great answer. answer Alec? Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right, so Alec, if you could bring back any fashion trend from the past, what would it be? Fashion trend from the past. How about like, um, let's see. Fashion trend from the past. You know what's hilarious is the, is women's like the old bikinis back in the day is freaking hilarious. So I would totally go. <laughs> Those things are so funny. I would go with that. That would be a trend I would like to see. There you go. Yeah. All right, Bradley, what about you? Uh, I would probably go with those, uh, I think it's the the 80s like jumpsuits, like what all the Bruins players were wearing to the Lake Tahoe game, I think. Oh, uh, yeah. Like the skiing, like the kind of that skier outfit with the bright colors. Yeah. That's for sure. Don't you all have day. one of those? Mm, uh no, no, I don't have one. I think you do. <laughs> I don't think so. But they're they're awesome. They're sweet. I think they'll go well with my mustache. 
there you go. Absolutely. Well, everything goes well with the mustache. I Absolutely. Mean, that is also true. Yeah. Thank you, Matt. Except for the entire year of 2021. <laughs> but, um... All right, uh, Alec, <laughs> who was your who was your biggest celebrity crush when you were a kid or a teenager? I, I swear to you, I didn't even have one. Really? I'm not. I'm not yeah, I, I didn't have one. Okay. I don't know why. Like people bring that up all the time and they talk about that. And I was like, I just did not even, even I, I have no clue why it had nothing to do with celebrities for me at any point in time. We've heard that before. That's all right. Okay. Brett, did you have one? Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> not to get weird. Uh, he, no, not, it's, it's not, it's not weird, but it's easily by far Mila Kunis. Uh, Grew up on that '70s show, and I totally thought he was gonna say a dude. Like, <laughs> oh, like I had I, a bromance crush on this guy. Yeah, there's some people you have man crushes on. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. But, yeah, yeah. Uh, but but Mila Kunis by far for sure. She's still, you know, still at the top. Yeah. All right, uh, Bradley. If you could add any person's face to Mount Rushmore, uh, who would it be? Whoa. I hate person's face. Wow, that's a tough one. It doesn't have to be a president. Doesn't yeah, have to be uh, a US. M- Could be a fictional okay. character. Could be Mila Kunis. Uh, yeah. Oh, okay. Totally. I got it. Actually, it's between. It's between Don't you dare two. take mine, even though you're going first. No, I'm not gonna, you, you're not going to pick this. Okay. Um, it's tough because it has to do with the same thing. It's. I'm I'm gonna pick Dwayne Wade, but my second pick would be Pat Riley because without him we wouldn't have Dwayne Wade. So it's like it's a toss up, like half faces to make one face, uh, Dwayne Wade slash Pat Riley. Oh, so I was gonna say Tony Soprano all day. Just seeing his face on Mount Rushmore would be freaking hilarious. <laughs> that is awesome. That, yeah, <laughs> that would be great. I should have picked that, but yeah, I, I thought you were going James, to James James Gandolfini. Yeah. yeah. Well, no, but I want the fictional character of yeah. Tony Soprano. Want... Yes. Okay. With the okay. cigar. With the cigar. With the with the yes. Cigar. Exactly. And the, and the ducks and everything. <laughs> and the ducks. <laughs> yes. Yes. The ducks. <laughs> and the ducks. And some gabagool. Yes. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so fun, I, I have to throw this in. So yeah. a story about Dwayne Wade. Oh, actually, nice. my so years ago, my in-laws owned a company that made really high end you know super expensive exclusive playhouses for for rich people to get their kids and i during a um sort of an in between job period uh, i worked in the shop helping build things and uh, install systems and stuff like that and we built a uh sort of this big theme bed that was uh, this curved structure with slides and a, you know a bunk bed and all this stuff on it that had a curved front with a with a backboard and a rim for Dwayne Wade's kid. That's, That's awesome. Cool. So that was That's a pretty cool. that was a pretty sweet uh, sweet thing knowing that was going to get delivered to him. That was that was pretty awesome. And cool. our uh, our guy Chad, <clears throat> uh, Doctor Chad, came up with last week's answer which was sanitation workers that's right so yeah bear bear got that first guess first first words out of his mouth sanitation workers he got it right off the bat and it was like that's insane between 35 and 40 something like that uh sanitation workers die every year yeah so uh so let's talk about this week's notable smokable and we have a Brand new sponsor partner here at How About That Cigar. We are so grateful because we are huge fans of this company and we love the work that they're doing, not just in cigars, but in the communities around them. So it is time for this week's Notable Smokable brought to us by Ace Prime Cigars. Uh, Ace Prime, notable cigars, notable passion, notable purpose. So for this week's uh, Notable Smokables, Garrett, let's start with you. I had the Vieja um, Carolina Reaper. Oh, the Viaje. Viaje. What did I say? You said Vieja. 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 Said Vieja. Vieja. It's close. <laughs> it's close. How, how, how was it? it was so good. here's, and I'll be completely honest here. 
um, the the jalapeno, the ghost pepper, those were all good cigars. I just don't think they lived up to that spice level that they were advertising, in my opinion. Okay. The Caroline okay. Reaper kind of redeemed themselves. It was a it was a spice bomb. It had yeah. well, you would expect it. it would have to being a Carolina Reaper. If yeah. you're gonna put Carolina Reaper on a cigar, it better have some spice. And I was reluctant to try it because I had been disappointed by the other ones. But this one delivered. It is a spice bomb. It is delicious. It was very good. Nice. Uh, so, Alec, you guys obviously smoke mostly your own stuff, but do you get a chance from time to time to venture outside of the brand portfolio and, and try something else out there? You would think we mostly smoked our stuff, but we smoke a ton of other cigars. And for me, I mean, mine would be the Illusione Hot 10 right now. Oh, yeah. Oh. Oh, that cigar is fantastic i did it in a pairing recently with some whiskey and i thought it was absolutely phenomenal i had another one on my desk i was going to use but it's such a cop out which is the uh the pledge but um because i mean we were smoking that before it got number one but yeah that hot 10 is absolutely phenomenal yeah, yeah. bradley what about you so i'm trying to think of what i had this week because i want to stick true to the segment <laughs> um the the protocol cyber crimes unit um, oh, yeah. was absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. I think it's the best one that they've uh, made so far. And I, I texted Juan being like, dude, congratulations. Cause this thing is, I haven't had that yet. Do you have any left? I don't think so. I think I smoked them all. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, how was that trend that you smoked today? <laughs> it's okay. No, it was good. Yeah, Wait, you don't good. have any left. I'm gonna no, check on that I, right now. No, I'm you, checking I, on that I, right now. <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I, I don't. I if you, if you find it, you yeah. can have it. Oh, dude, it's it's a fantastic cigar. Fantastic. Yeah, I've heard really really good things about it. Mm -hmm. um, for me, this week it was the uh, so Black Label Trading Company makes some special cigars for uh, that that are mainly limited to factory visits. Um, at the Oveja Negra factory. Um, but they, you, there are a few opportunities outside of factory visits to get your hands on them. Uh, and uh, I bought uh, this sort of pack uh, from them uh, around Christmas time. And it came with the, uh, some of these special cigars. The one is called the Neon Tiger. The other is called the Shere Khan. Uh, and they're beautiful barber pole designed cigars. And I smoked the Shere Khan uh, mm. at, uh, um I, well i think it was here in the studio um and man it's it, it you never know what it's going to really be like when it's got those different colored wrappers you know striped around the cigar but that one you really did get little little notes of each wrapper it was really cool to experience that because you know, it's, i mean you're looking at three different wrapper leaves and it was you really i really did get a little bit of nuance from each of them. I thought that was a really good cigar, and it, and and it, it's not easy to make cigars like that burn well either. And but it burned like a champ the whole time, and very right. very, just n no joke. I mean that cigar will be, be prepared, have your palate prepared for that cigar because man, drink, eat a meal because it'll it'll hit you. And I don't usually get hit by cigars, but yeah, that one really hit me. Nice. They make some killer stuff. Uh, they're uh, they're killer bees. <clears throat> the oh, Connecticut oh. and the the other one, and I think they have a new one also, but I haven't tried that one yet. Um, yeah, the swarm, first. the swarm's yes. got a maroon wrapper on it. We just reviewed that one recently, and it's a very good cigar. Nice. Yeah, that sounds great. So that is this week's notable smokables, brought to us by Ace Prime Cigars, improving lives through fine cigars. Visit aceprime.com to learn more. So. Uh, just to give our viewers and listeners a couple programming notes about some stuff we have coming up soon. Next week, it is unbelievable. Next week is March 1st on our show night. And this, it's just such an, uh, Garrett and I are still absolutely blown away that we, we're coming to episode 100 next week. Uh, we're so grateful for that. And, and we're also so grateful that we are finally going to have the man himself matt booth on the show for episode 100 so we're very grateful to have matt on the show next week 
uh, the, the week after that, uh, on the eighth, we'll actually be off the air. I'll be on vacation that week, uh, with my family. So we will be off the air, but following that up on the 15th of March, uh, we're going to have Scott Pierce, who is the executive director of the PCA. And we're going to try to find out everything that's going on in the regulatory world and, um, possibly see if we can get some updates on hopefully if there's going to be some kind of a trade show this year. Um, I think, I think, hang on. We've, uh, I think Alec has just stolen a cigar is what I'm meaning. Have we had a theft? Yes. We have had a theft. Yes. yes. What, did, it, what did we thieve? What did we thieve? There was no protocol in there, but I did find last year's find a rare in there. <laughs> and I, I don't have any. So I took that and lit it up immediately. Nice. There you go, big bro. Well, don't say man. I never gave you anything. Don't say I never gave <laughs> hey, you Hey, you've stolen plenty of cigars from my humidors over the day. Oh my! That, that was like ten years ago, Alec. Come on. <laughs> yeah, and you, st- yeah, but they were good cigars. That, that's true. That's true. And it wasn't ten years ago. <laughs> okay, eight, eight years ago. Yeah. <laughs> that's nope. close. Nope. All right, so guys, give uh, give our viewers and listeners where's the best place for them to get all the latest and greatest info and keep up with what's going on with Alec Bradley and Alec and Bradley. Uh, Alec Bradley cigar on Instagram, on Facebook and on, or Twitter is just Alec Bradley. And then on Instagram and Facebook, Alec and Bradley. Um, so check us out there. We also have black market, filthy hooligans and shamrocks that have just begun shipping. So you can find them at your local tobacconist, um, check them out online. If you can't go to your local tobacconist, uh, so they're just heading now and you can get them in time for St. Patrick's day. Fantastic. Guys, we can't thank you enough for being yeah. on the show. Um, hang with us in the studio just for two two or three minutes after we go off the air. Uh, and, and thank you again for being on episode 99 of How About That Cigar Live. We really appreciate it, guys. Yeah. Thank, thank you, guys. You so much. I'm glad yeah. we were 99 and not 100. That's a lot of pressure. <laughs> thank God Matt's doing it because he'll just talk about a bunch of nonsense the entire time. That's, and it'll be that's perfect. our goal. Our goal is yeah. to talk about maybe like 1% cigars the whole yeah. time. That's our goal. Yeah. 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 <laughs> With Matt, you'll be fine. You'll be good yeah. to go. Naked mole rat farming and yeah. everything. Yeah, it'll be good. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, it's uh, that's much better than clothed mole rat. Oh, farming. it is. Hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. It's better that way. Yeah, it is. So, all our viewers and listeners, as always, guys, we thank you so much for spending your time with us. Whether it was here live on the broadcast, if you're watching after the fact on Facebook and YouTube, and especially if you're listening to the audio podcast, we especially thank you for listening to us while you drive down the road or whatever it is you do. What is that? What do you, what do you, what, what? You, uh, I, seeing I was a, just, what I was just saying, giving a good, uh, you know, a goodbye with the Kintsugi box. Oh, so I just I wanted like that. Everyone, that box is gorgeous. I, want, I, I wanted everyone to see this is where I keep my coasters. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I got nothing in mind, but I just wanted want everyone to, to see real quick. Because I had it right next to me, so I, I apologize. I know no, the show no, is it's all good. I love it. I know the show is done, but who does the artwork? What is it? One of you guys? So That's I, I, we, we, we secret. I, I kind of lead it, but Alec all, is also involved in all the process, and we work with our graphic designer um, to create this. So this was so uh, the Alec, final. Alec does like the crayon rough draft. <laughs> And then you look, uh, look, man. My side is more the blending side, okay? Bradley handles the artwork and the concepts, okay? Okay. I handle more the blending side. Both, both sides. I are hope you enjoy that kintsugi. You're I both blended pretty. it. Both sides are valid. You're both pretty. You're both pretty. No, I'm not. Thank I'm you. Both. So, so uh, again, for our viewers, if you guys have questions for Garrett or myself, email us directly on the website, howaboutthatcigar.com. Follow us on all social media at HBT Cigars, HBT Cigar. And until we see you guys next time, as always, burn cigars, not bridges. See you guys. Thanks, everybody.